Greetings to all of you. Welcome back to The Pen Habit. Today's pen is a pen that is, is a brand, actually, that is new to me. It's the first time I have had a chance to lay my hand on one of these, and uh, I'm excited for the possibilities. So uh, rather than leave you hanging, which you probably aren't because you can see it up in the title, uh, today's pen is a Conklin Duragraph. Now, this is a fairly new line of pens that was added to Goulet pens. They've been around for a while, but Goulet pens, which is where I got this, uh, just added this to their lineup. It's uh, an acrylic pen that retails for around $45, I believe. Uh, comes in a couple of different finishes and uh, was my first introduction to the Conklin line. Now, the pen comes in this very large case, especially for a $45 pen. Uh, the blue material feels almost like faux leather on the box itself. It's one of the nicer boxes I've ever had. Nice Conklin logo on the front. Established 1898, it says. Open it up. And you've got a pen coffin. Now, this pen coffin is, in many ways, the most coffin-like of every pen coffin I have ever seen, ever. And let me show you what I mean. You open it up, and you get this pile of satin on which the pen rests. It honestly looks like the interior <laughs> of a real coffin, um, which is... I think kind of funny. Comes with a couple cartridges, one in blue and one in black, standard international cartridges. Uh, these are the short ones, but you can use the long ones in this pen or converters. Comes with a little brochure here with some instructions and uh, some refill instructions if you need those. Set this aside and now let's look at the pen. So this is really quite a lovely pen, I think. Um, I love this kind of amber material. It really is semi-translucent, really lovely acrylic. So starting at the top, it's a flat top pen. It says Conklin, established 1898. Uh, you've got a very, very stiff clip uh, with kind of chromed clip here. Comes down to a band that says Conklin. And then you've got... Uh, so Duragraph, which is the Conklin Duragraph, and then some more crescent moon shapes there. Um, down the body of the pen, fairly straight-sided pen, another chrome ring here, and then a flat bottom on the end of the pen. Threads are... There's a little bit of slack to them, but they're not bad. Um, they're a little squeaky. They feel like they ought to be greased or something. Uh, you come to this section here, got a plastic section. And metal threads on, so your, your metal meshing with acrylic, so that's just a, one thing to be aware of. And then you, you can use a standard international converter in the pen as well. Okay. And I don't know if you can see here, like for instance right there, you can actually see the converter through the pen. So, um, then we come to the nib. Um, so this is a Conklin nib. Got a crescent moon shaped breather hole, the Conklin logo in gold plating, and then it says Toledo, USA. I'm not really sure why Ohio is the home of so many US pen manufacturers. I've got family, most of my family's from Ohio originally, so I, I used to spend a lot of time in Ohio, and I wish I had known that back then when I was a kid, because then I could have gotten pens from the source. Anyway, so the nib is a medium. And uh, if I may quote Inigo Montoya, you'll keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. We'll get to that in a second. So let's talk stats on the pen. Um, all right. We are looking at 140 millimeters. So it's a fairly decent sized pen when, you, when it's capped. When it's uncapped, you're looking at 125. So in my hand, it fits quite nicely. I, I would not use this pen capped because I don't need to. And then you can post it, but you'll notice, and I don't know if you can see this, it doesn't post very deeply. It will post and it will stay on fairly well, but it won't post deeply, mainly because I think this ring is here and they don't want you cracking the lip of the pen. So it becomes very long and very back heavy. It's, this is not a pen that does well. Um, being posted, in my opinion. Uh, so, but it is possible. You're looking at 14 grams 
posted or 14 grams unposted and 28 grams posted, which means that the cap by itself is just as heavy as the rest of the pen with ink in it. And then in terms of the grip, the section, the middle part of the section here is 10 millimeters. Widest part of the barrel is 12.6 and the widest point of the cap is 15. So this pen fits quite nicely in my hand. I actually like the way it feels quite a bit. And without the cap on it, it's very light. So that, that works well for me. Um, what I don't care for is the nib. And I'll talk you through why that is and what I plan on doing about it after I'm done recording this video. So here we go. This is the Conklin. Duragraph. No one, I just skipped a line. And you are looking at a steel nib, EEL in medium. Now, just for comparison's sake here, let me take my Caveco all rounder and just which is a medium, and draw it, draw it there. Now, normally, that is what that's a little narrower than what I would consider a medium in most most times. This is super fine for a medium. It's finer than any Japanese medium I own, uh, which is why I use the phrase. Do you keep using that word? I do not think it means what you think it means. This ain't no medium, regardless of what they're calling it. Um, and I, I know it's medium because there's a little M on the side of the nib there. You may be able to see. The ink is Caran d'Ache Grand Canyon. And here's our quote. Okay, so I don't know if you heard that in the microphone. I hope you did. This pen, there are a couple things that I like about the nib a lot. Uh, first of all, the wetness, especially for such a fine nib, is, is really pretty good. Um, if this were a, an honest-to-goodness medium and that same level of wetness existed, I would be thrilled with this nib. Um, and I can get there and probably will um, by, I'm going to spread the tines a little bit and, and increase the wetness just a little bit more, which hopefully will give me closer to an act, you know, what I consider to be a medium. The other big problem is the polish on the nib tip, which is, I'm trying not to be negative, but it's abysmal. It's really bad. Um, <laughs> and, and again, this is my only Conklin I've ever used. I don't know if this is a one-time deal or if this is what you have to expect. The nib is not scratchy at all. The tines are perfectly in alignment. There's no scratchiness to it. It feels like they didn't bother polishing the nib at all. Uh, it's, it's got that feeling of, of the nails, fingernails down the chalkboard. Uh, it just, it makes me, you know, excuse the grossness, but I call them the piss shivers. Uh, it just makes me Ugh, when I put this pen to paper. That's easily remedied. And I want to remedy that because other than that, I really like this pen. For a $45 pen, it's very well made. It's a lovely material. But the tip on this nib is just bad. It's bad. There's, there's just no other way around it. The other thing, I believe this is a standard number six size nib. So the other thing I could do is just pull the nib on this and put a Goulet nib in instead. And if I did that, 
this would become one of my favorite pens, I suspect. So let's uh, let's go through the rest of it here. So now you know about how I feel about the nib. You can see that it actually has <laughs> quite a bit of line variation. Um, now the feed clearly wasn't designed to put up with that much pushing of it, but there's because it's such a fine line and there is a, a, a bit of spring to it. You know, it's uh, it's not too shabby um, for the line variation thing. I mean, for a steel nib, that's unheard of to, to get that kind of variation. You just don't find that. Um, so yeah, that in that respect, it works really well. Now, I haven't been able to test to see if there, this pen has an ink starvation problem. I don't believe it does, but I can't stand writing with it in its current state long enough to find out. So uh, once I adjust this nib and, uh, and smooth it out, I'll, I'll include my findings from my app, my post adjustment work on the pen habit blog post that's that on which this video is going to be embedded. Uh, so please check the description of the video to find the blog post and go see the follow up of how I feel about the pen after I did my adjustments to it. So in the end, um, oh, quickly, got the reverse writing. It actually writes a very fine line. It's pretty smooth. Um, Frankly, the top of the nib is better polished than the bottom of the nib is, which is really unfortunate. You know, so in in uh, in review, I really love the material of this pen. I like the classic shape of the pen, the flat topped shape of the pen a lot. Uh, it feels solidly made. This this is a pen that feels like it could last you a good long while. The only thing that stands in the way of me loving this pen is that nib. And if I could figure out a way, if if I can figure out a way to make this nib glow the way I suspect I can, um, then then this is going to become a pen I go to fairly frequently in my collection. Um, it's unfortunate that the nib that came with this pen was so poor. Uh, hopefully that I hopefully I just got a dud and not an indication. And this is not an indication of what all of these pens are like, but. Uh, I do believe I'm actually going to try to buy another one just to see if if the nib is the same because it's a standard number six size nib and because I know how to adjust my own nibs. I don't mind doing the work. It, it won't take me that much time, but the nib as it was just it wasn't great. So like the pen, don't like the nib. It's unfortunate, but it's a pretty inexpensive pen. And uh, and if you screw up, you can replace it with another standard nib from another company. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments, or if your own experience differs, particularly with the Conklin Duragraph nib, uh, please head over to penhabit.com and leave your comments over there because I'd like to know if other people had the same issues with the polish on the nib that I did, or if uh, if I just was unlucky in this pen. And of course, you can always find me on the social medias or send me an email at penhabit at gmail.com. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I appreciate all your feedback and your constructive feedback and your, uh, your comments and your knowledge sharing. I really do appreciate it. So thank you as always for watching, and we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye-bye.